So I spent the last week going hands-on with some pretty hidden, but at the same time pretty game-changing smartphone tech and smartphones. So here are seven amazing things to look forward to. Do you remember that crazy iPhone 6 concept with the built-in projector and the laser keyboard for typing? It felt like something out of a sci-fi movie, but less than 10 years later, we've actually got something that's better. Samsung showed us their selfie type feature that uses just your phone's selfie camera to create a virtual keyboard. But instead of firing out a laser that would need a perfectly flat surface to work and would consume a ton of battery, this tech actually tracks the movement of your fingers, which means it doesn't actually matter what you tap, just the gestures you're making with your fingers. Then, I got some exclusive time with this concept smartphone by a company called Sensil. And you'll see what I mean when I say it's pretty revolutionary. So, this is a company that works on creating force touch sensors. Sensors that can sit below a surface and detect not just touch, but pressure. And they've worked with a company called Visionox to create a prototype phone to really show you what this means. There's a few obvious benefits, like not needing physical buttons on the sides of your phone. But the more I use this tech, the more I started to realize the full potential. For starters, having purely software-based buttons means you can configure everything. Which buttons are shown, how far up and down they are, so you can reach for them easier, and even which side of the phone they're on. All of a sudden, left-handed users can actually have a phone that feels like it had them in mind. But that stuff's relatively basic. When I said these sensors can detect pressure, I didn't just mean they can distinguish between a hard and a soft press. They can pick up about 3,000 levels of pressure, which creates some interesting use cases. The company were demoing the idea of using pressure to scrub through a video and using it just makes sense. Instead of fiddling around dragging a progress bar at the bottom of your video, you could just squeeze to go forward or back, and the harder you squeeze, the faster you'll move through the video. In a gaming scenario, you could be racing, and the more pressure you apply on the pedals, the more of a response you would get. Let's say you're in the camera app. You can rotate your phone, and with this, your shutter button can always rotate to stay in the right position. Plus, your smartphone gains the ability to focus with light pressure on the shutter and then snap a photo with a harder press, just like you're used to on a DSLR. And there are a ton of demos like this, but how does this technology actually tie in to the next generation of phones? Well, the company offers a full sheet of these sensors, which means you can grant the entire screen, including a phone's curved edges, this ability to detect pressure. You could think of it as your smartphone suddenly having access to another dimension mention of touch information. It'll be able to understand which screen touches are accidental, which touches are just from your palms resting on the screen, and which ones are intentional. And this will be vital as we start seeing screens that wrap all the way around our devices. The current capacitive smartphone screen technology responds only to your fingers, whereas using sensors like this mean that you could use a stylus, a pencil, even a paintbrush if you wanted to. And while capacitive screens suffer all kinds of hell in challenging environments like in water, this doesn't, because its pressure sensors can just ignore the mild background pressure from the water and focus on the harder pressure coming from your fingers. You could even, in theory, add this tech behind the glass on the back of your phone, allowing you to scroll pages or activate gestures without moving your thumbs at all. Sensor showed me how it works under literally any material that has the potential to flex, so it would even work with wooden or leather finishes. And from what I'm told, the tech has come down to a level where you could get basic implementation into a phone for something like five to ten dollars. As the bezels and buttons of our phones have melted away over the years, the screen has become our most central interaction with our technology. And so this will be pivotal, especially when combined with another piece of tech I'm going to show you in a bit. If, by the way, you're enjoying this video, a sub would be awesome. Before I get to that other bit of tech though, number five is ECMF, or Electronic Colors, Materials and Finishes. Based on OnePlus's Concept One smartphone, I can definitely see phones in a few years shipping with a finish that can morph. As of now, OnePlus showed off cameras that can be hidden by tinting the glass in front of them, but I could see this going further. Imagine a device that ships with a transparent glass back panel, which can then change color to match the wallpaper you apply on the front. Number four charging is about to become much less of a worry. There's a good chance you've heard of something called gallium nitride. Well, there's a bunch of companies like Anker who are about to go wild with this compound. Gallium nitride in chargers can be used as a replacement for silicon, one that charges faster, wastes less energy, and can do all of this in a smaller physical footprint. So for example, this tiny brick here delivers 18 watts of power almost four times that of the five watt Apple brick. And as you make these gallium nitride bricks larger, the power output jumps dramatically. 
My personal prediction is that at least some smartphones, either this year or next year, will start shipping with ultra-speed gallium nitride chargers in the box. The other side of that coin is a material called graphene, which we've just started seeing in portable power banks. Graphene can be charged at a much higher power without damage, so this 5000 mAh graphene power bank can go from 0 to 100% in just 18 minutes. As this tech finds its way into smartphones, you could expect a similar jump. Foldable phones are about to go mainstream, and we've seen foldables already, but the reason I say this now is based on what I've just seen happen in the PC market. The Consumer Electronics Show this year saw the introduction of devices like Dell's Concept Ori and Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Fold, which look like they've already ironed out a lot of the problems we saw in first generation foldables. Lenovo's hinge mechanism, for example, allows the device to be held in place partway through the fold and has a mechanism to keep the display creasing to an absolute minimum. Companies like Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi, and TCL and many more. They're all likely to announce their own foldables this year, and they'll have learned from last year's mishaps, creating devices that are more durable, more affordable, and most importantly, more useful. Now, also at the Consumer Electronics Show, I managed to find a bit of a hidden gem, a smartphone, based on technologies that I've never seen in a smartphone before. It's by a company called Hap2U, who've developed the concept of a tactile interface, and this builds further on those pressure sensors I showed you earlier. I should clarify, this tech already exists exists in a very basic form on most smartphones. When you receive a call, your phone vibrates. When you type on your virtual keyboard, you get a haptic response. The difference here is that this tactile technology allows those haptics to be localized. Instead of your whole phone vibrating with every action, this company has developed a system that can dynamically adjust the friction just below your finger, which has two main benefits. It A, saves battery, because this haptic response now only needs to occur at a specific location, and B, more importantly, allows you to feel texture on your phone's display. Let's say you were listening to music and your phone is in your pocket. Then, even whilst your screen is off, you could reach into your pocket and be able to feel for a virtual key to skip tracks. The booth I went to had a couple of demos, like how it would affect playing a game, and even though the demo itself was basic, the impact this tactility had on the experience was a world apart. I tried a Fruit Ninja style app, and I could literally feel the impact of slicing tough fruit under my finger. There was also a fish demo where I could feel subtle micro vibrations under each scale I turned over. So why is this tech important? Well, remember I said how we're gonna start seeing the physical buttons on your smartphones disappearing? Well, having a tactile surface means in the same way that you feel for a physical button now, you could feel for your virtual buttons. As displays become ever more central to our smartphones and smart devices, being able to feel through them could be the next big step. Let's take that foldable Lenovo laptop I talked about earlier. And probably my biggest reservation about it, why I wouldn't use it, is because I prefer the feel and the travel of a physical mechanical keyboard versus a virtual one. That said, with this kind of technology, that allows you to feel texture, it's perfectly possible that we could eventually have a virtual keyboard that feels like a physical one, with all the advantages of virtual. Virtual is infinitely more portable, instantly customizable, and able to adapt, send emojis, GIFs, and all the cool stuff we become used to now. When smartphones first started coming, a lot of people complained about the move to virtual keys, but nowadays most people would struggle going back to physical. So that's tactile technology. And who knows, maybe even in the future, content could be created with this tactile in mind. Let's say I was planning to buy a car online in 10 years time, it's perfectly possible that you'd be able to feel the car's texture through your smartphone's display. Just a thought. Now, on the subject of screens, OnePlus, at it again, just recently made a statement that their upcoming OnePlus 8 Pro smartphone will have the best display you'll see in 2020. They're working with Samsung to create a display that can refresh 120 times per second, and we've seen this before on the phone, but this time it is different. It'll be an OLED display, which also has the perk of greater contrast levels. It'll have a touch response of 240 hertz, meaning that 240 times per second, it is scanning to see where your finger is, and that compares to 120 times per second on an iPhone, and software that can add frames into videos you're watching to make them appear even smoother. On one hand, this is incredible. I love using high refresh rate displays, and so I hope this works as well as they're promising. But we will have to see how it affects battery life, because that's always been my reservation with this technology. Displaying extra frames drains more battery. We noticed this when OnePlus jumped last year from 60Hz to 90Hz, and so going from 90 to 120 alongside this software that will now drain even more 
battery inserting extra frames into videos is risky and will pan out one of three ways. A. OnePlus ends up with a fantastic display on a phone with terrible battery life. B. OnePlus ends up with a fantastic display but has to stick a massive 5000 plus milliamp hour battery inside, making it thicker and more expensive than last year. Or C, OnePlus figures out how to address the battery drain issue and somehow we get an absolute win-win. Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, then I spent a lot of time putting one together about all the things you didn't know about Google. So I'm gonna link that from here. And with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.